Voyager 1 has journeyed 22 billion kilometers over four decades since its launch in the late 1970s. The question lingers, how much farther can Voyager 1 go? Could this spacecraft eventually reach a distant star system as a representative of humanity? And if it does, might we receive a response from that far-off place? The Voyager missions stand as significant milestones in space exploration, offering unprecedented images and insights into the outer planets. Their mission was expected to conclude, yet it persists to this day. Can Voyager 1 truly traverse the cosmos indefinitely, and what wonders await it on this epic odyssey? Voyager 1 travels at a velocity of approximately 62,140 km per hour and has long surpassed the confines of our solar system. In 2012, Voyager 1 became the first human-made object to exit the heliosphere and venture into interstellar space, followed shortly by its twin, Voyager 2. Since then, these two probes have ventured deeper into the cosmos, each on its unique trajectory, with the mysteries of their future discoveries awaiting. We cannot foretell if one day, another spacefaring species will stumble upon these probes, akin to us, and marvel at the presence of extraterrestrial technological artifacts. The primary mission of the probes was to explore the outer planets of the solar system. In the 1970s, a unique constellation made it possible to send the probes on a uniquely short journey to the distant reaches of the solar system. Even back then, there were clever minds at NASA who thought it might be possible to send a probe beyond the orbits of Neptune and Pluto towards the Kuiper Belt. This band over 4.5 billion kilometers wide is home to billions of rocks, asteroids, comets, and several dwarf planets as we know them today. But in the 1970s, when the Voyager mission was launched, little was known about this distant region of space. It took the two probes 12 years to reach the outer planets and another 10 years to cross the Kuiper Belt. Nobody knew whether the probes would survive, the risk of collisions with rocks or asteroids was very high. But the two icons of space exploration overcame every problem and every task we set for them. For 45 years, the Kuiper Belt finally merges into the end of the heliosphere, the area from which the influence of our own sun slowly diminishes. Here, the probes were already about 18 billion kilometers away from the sun scientists call this area the heliopause, characterized by the separation of solar and interstellar winds, interesting the researchers because of its unique properties. When Voyager 1 arrived there, 35 years had passed since its launch. No one would have thought that the Voyager probes would come this far, and they are still going. On April 5, 2024, Voyager 1 was 2.39 billion kilometers from the sun, and Voyager 2 continues its journey at 2.37 billion kilometers. Where will they go next, and what surprises did researchers experience when the most successful probes of all time left the solar system? Shock at the edge of the solar system, it was really a shock when Voyager 1 was the first of the two probes to cross the final frontier of the solar system. The measurement data transmitted was very different from what was expected. The transition from the heliosphere to space proved to be like a thick wall, whereas simulations had always shown a smooth transition like in a lagoon. The flight through the unexpectedly hard threshold raised new questions about how the interstellar medium is composed. Until now, all of our data about this region had been pure speculation. Shortly after the transition, Voyager 1 delivered real data from open space for the first time, and this is where the next surprise appeared. Although the particle density dropped dramatically as expected, there were still more particles than expected. This and probably a completely different pressure ratio at the transition to open space are very likely causing a buildup of particles and radiation in the interior of the solar system, creating a dense wall. Voyager 2 confirmed the measurement results when it crossed this threshold years later at a completely different location. There, too, the comparatively hard and abrupt end of the solar sphere was revealed. The heliosphere is a kind of protective shell for our solar system formed from the sun's permanent streams of particles. Cloaked in a shield that shields them from the intense interstellar radiation, the star and its accompanying planets reside at this enchanting boundary. Scientists also aim to uncover additional insights into the interplay between our solar system and the wider cosmos. Our sun doesn't stay fixed in space, it journeys alongside its retinue of planets, moons, asteroids, and comets through the galaxy known as the Milky Way. Just as a moving car leaves behind air currents and exhaust fumes, our stellar system likely deposits remnants of the interstellar medium and engages with it. The Voyager mission offers us a maiden voyage into this realm. Who would have thought that these two would fly forever? Would you have thought that these two probes could be humanity's longest-lasting ambassadors? 
Engineers assembled the probes in record time with a minimal budget, time was of the essence as a launch window was only open for a few years, and this opportunity of a conjunction of all the outer planets only comes around once every 176 years. The signals are received on Earth by the Deep Space Network, a network of three high-performance antennas located in California, Spain, and Australia. The Deep Space Network not only transmits the signals from the Voyager mission but is also used by NASA and other space organizations to communicate with distant probes or spaceships. Whether radio contact with the Voyager probes would continue beyond the Kuiper Belt was unclear at the beginning of the mission. The mission beyond the outer planets was a daring adventure, and it is nothing short of a miracle that the connection is still stable more than 45 years later and at distances of more than 20 billion kilometers. The Voyager probes have already made indelible history here, and their mission will not be topped anytime soon. Of course, this long journey also required some kind of propulsion system for navigation and course corrections. In this case, these are not conventional thrusters but small hydrazine swirl wheels that stabilize the probes and allow NASA to precisely control the orientation of the probes in space. The actual propulsion of the probes can still be tracked back to the thrust they received from the rockets at launch in 1977. The probes then accelerated via various swing-by maneuvers on the gravitational fields of the planets they passed. Voyager 1 got its last big boost at Saturn. The speed and direction of the probes were repeatedly adjusted over the years using gravitational assistance maneuvers, so the probes do not require any additional propellant. They are now moving through space in a state of so-called free flight, which means they no longer need to be actively propelled to continue their journey. They glide through the vacuum of space, largely unaffected by the gravity of the sun or other bodies, and this flight will continue forever. But before we take a look at where they might end up, let's take a look at the design and finesse of the technical equipment and instruments. Both probes house a whole arsenal of scientific instruments that have been strategically placed above and inside the body, well protected by the robust construction and special radiation shielding. The instruments were capable of exploring the dense phenomenon of space for an incredibly long time, from the first fascinating true-color photographs of the outer planets to magnetic fields and the composition of interstellar particles. It is truly a feat of engineering that this technology has accomplished and that it is still functional today. You can think of the technology like the old cameras that still work today, while modern digital cameras often fail after just a few years of use or are simply no longer supported. Most measuring devices and cameras have been switched off for years in order to save valuable electricity. This comes from radioisotope generators, which convert the heat generated by the decay of plutonium, 238 into electricity. These long-term batteries will probably supply electricity for another five years or so, after which they will most likely go silent around the year 2030. NASA must expect radio contact to be lost forever then, an era will come to an end. How far can Voyager 1 really travel? You've probably wondered where these two will end up one day. Perhaps you've also seen the movie, Star Trek, the motion picture, from 1979, in which a strange superintelligence with an initially indecipherable permanent radio message, there, causes excitement. At the end of the movie, it becomes clear that Captain Kirk and his crew have stumbled upon an ancient human probe, and Vare turns out to be a distorted version of Voyager. This may well become reality one day, it is possible that the probe will eventually fly into a distant star system and become stranded on a planet. However, it is much more likely that both probes will continue on their course through open space on their current trajectory. However, it will take them thousands of years just to pass by the nearest stars, calculations have shown that this could be Gliese 445 in the constellation Giraffe and Ross 248 in the constellation Andromeda. Presumably, the two will fly on and on until they fall apart in a few hundred thousand or even millions of years. Nobody really knows how the radiation from interstellar space and temperatures of around minus 273.15 degrees Celsius will affect the material of the probes in the long term. Further stresses are particle streams, which are rather sparse in space. We also cannot rule out the possibility of the Voyager probes encountering smaller asteroids or micrometeorites, which over time will erode the metallic parts and make them thinner. The probes were bolted, riveted, and in places welded, so far, this has withstood all the stresses incredibly well. Experts estimate that at least individual parts of the probes will realistically be traveling through the universe as recognizable technical components millions of years from now. 
If humans were to achieve mastery over faster than light travel, there exists the possibility of encountering these probes in distant space once more, or they might one day be retrieved by a spacecraft from an alien civilization. Inside these probes, extraterrestrial beings would discover a simple yet profound golden record, revealing the creators of the probes, their duration of travel, and their origin. Such an event could lead to an unexpected message from the cosmos reaching us. Click on subscribe now and look forward to many new exciting videos.